Rubber game win yesterday against the Phillies. Today, the road trip begins in Chicago, where a plethora of young talent will be on display on both sides. Tanner Roark gets the call just up the road from his hometown. Memorial Day baseball from the friendly confines of New Look Wrigley Field. Rain has gone away. Cloudy skies right now, but a lot of weather changes in Chicago today. It's Memorial Day. It's holiday baseball. What better place to be than the north side of Chicago with some of our fans in the house? The Nats right now, two and a half up on the Mets. They have an early lead against the Phillies. Washington playing extremely well, 19 and 5. Eight straight series. And this road trip will bring us to Chicago and Cincinnati. Bob and FP, welcome to the ballpark. And today it's young guys day here at the ballpark I mean Bryant and Rizzo and Harper and all the great young players we're going to see in this series yeah the Cubs have a great young infield Bryce Harper versus Chris Bryant all the talk today Memorial Day Wrigley Field Tanner Roark pitching in front of all of his family it's going to be a great day all right so let's have a look at Harper and Bryant because these two kids are making an impact on their ball club Bryce just amazing maybe the best hitter in all of baseball right now and Chris Bryant in the minor leagues for a couple of weeks, and he's holding his own. Well, they grew up together in Las Vegas. Interesting quote from Chris Bryant. He saw Bryce Harper pitch when he was 11 years old. Said he was throwing 80 miles an hour back then. But we'll talk about Bryce Harper and what he's done so far this year. Arguably the best player in the National League. The month of May good to Bryce. 491 average. A 1.798 OPS. He has 11 homers, 26 RBI. Lefties, righties, he's doing it all. He's getting his hits. He's hitting home runs. He's walking. And nobody ever shows the defensive highlights, but he's playing gold glove quality right field for the Nats. Everybody wanted Chris Bryant to be with the Cubs on opening day. Theo Epstein left him in the minor leagues for some sound financial reasons for the better part of Aver. But since he's coming up, he has not been overmatched. No, and he's very athletic. I think Nats fans are going to be surprised how fast he is on the bases, how well he runs the bases. He's playing a decent third base. He's had some throwing difficulties over there, but he sees a lot of pitches every at-bat. He's going to work a count, and we're excited to see him play for the first time. There are a lot of Rizzos in the ballpark today, and that kid over at first base, pretty good for the Cubs as well. It's 59.9 miles from Wilmington, Illinois, to Chicago. And in his own backyard a couple of years ago, Tanner Roark, with half the town here, got his first Big league win. Yeah, it was an exciting night for Tanner Roark. Exciting night for us to watch his family in the bleachers in right field. There won't be bleachers in right field today, but rest assured, half of Wilmington, maybe all of Wilmington, Illinois, here to watch Tanner Roark. And you know what? Quite honestly, I miss Tanner Roark pitching every fifth day. Yeah. I'm excited to watch him pitch today. A 70 pitch pitch count. He's begging to go longer and deeper into this game. So we'll see first things first. But uh, we like Tanner Roark on the mound. He fires us up and. Uh, it's going to be a good day. Well, and I think there's a bigger story here, too. Doug Fister hurt. Steven Strasburg struggling. The Nationals need Tanner Roark as a starter right now. They do. And, and, and you never know in this game, if you go out there and deal today, what happens after today. But first things first, Tanner Roark on the mound against the Cubs. All right. So it's very wonderful when you have a guy back in the bullpen, back end of the bullpen, who's going to nail down a win after you play hard for two and a half hours. And uh, Drew Storton has been that guy lately. Well, he's a more mature Drew Storton. We talked about it the other day against the Phillies. He gave up a broken bat single, a C9 ground ball, and maybe a couple of years ago, he freaks out right there and says, oh, no, the tie-in runs on base. But now, when stuff starts to happen behind him, he doesn't panic. He's very calm out there, very mature, and he's graduated to the next level. Last 14 games, 10 for 10. 13 innings, no runs, 18 strikeouts. And he is alone at the top of the National League save leaders.
250 grand to build this thing over 100 years ago. Babe Ruth's called shot. 102nd year of pro baseball at Wrigley Field. The Cubs have been here for 100 years. Ironically, the night lights were installed in 88. First game rained out. Baseball gods didn't like it. But it has been in just a mecca for baseball all the way down through the decades and now through a full century into its second 100 years. And Dan Colco, they've done some wonderful things here at Wrigley Field without giving away the character of the ballpark. Yeah, Bob, it still has the charm that Wrigley Field always has, but it looks a good bit different than we've seen it last year and years past. Here come the bullpen guys through the shot like they love to do. The big changes, obviously, the notable ones that you can spot right away are the two giant video boards, the one in left center and the one in right down the line. The biggest one is nearly 4,000 square feet, the one in right field. A little smaller. It was just made operational this month. And then there are the bleachers. Those are being completely redone. They're slightly steeper than they were before. The left and center field bleachers have been opened. I'm sure we'll find a bunch of Tanner Roark supporters out there today. And we just missed the opening of the right field bleachers. The Cubs expect those to be ready next homestand. There are still other projects to be done. The home clubhouse will be brand spanking new. And I'm told it's going to be massive, about 30,000 square feet. And the bullpens will also be moved from their current location down the lines into a new space under the bleachers. They've got the batting cage out there now. They're going to move the bullpens under there. So we won't get to see the guys getting heckled from the fans like they do down the line now, Bob. But uh, you're right. The, the Ivy's still here. It still has a lot of the charm that Wrigley Field always has. But they're making some changes to it to try and spiff it up a little bit. Well, I think it's a wonderful thing. There's been some controversy with the surrounding rooftops. Many of them are blocked out from the field now, at least partially. But look at how big the bleachers are. They, they go almost twice as high up in deep left center and eventually in right center than they used to. So some controversy out there beyond Waveland Avenue and Addison and all that. But, hey, still a wonderful place to watch a baseball game. And I know FP, this was always one of his favorite places to play. 74 degrees. Wind has settled in a little bit. It's been blowing out most of the morning. We had rain. A couple of showers blow through. Uh, let's say between 10.30 and 12.30 today. And we've got some game notes for you. As the Nats come into this thing red hot. And how about their road record? They've won 10 of their last 13. That goes back to the series win in Atlanta that featured that comeback. The Nats at Wrigley Field, five of the last seven. And over the years, the Nationals are 17 and 15 here in the north side of Chicago. Dexter Fowler, he's been a pretty good solid veteran leadoff guy for the Cubs. But here comes the Nats lineup and Ryan Zimmerman, 307, 31 career RBIs, four homers at Wrigley Field. And remember last year, or maybe a couple of years ago, he had a, a sure home run blown back by the wind here. But this is a high flying offense right now. Only the Toronto Blue Jays have scored more runs in all of baseball than your Nats. First look. At the left-hander from Japan, Suyoshi Wada making his first start against the Nets. He had his second start of the year. He started the year on this disabled list with a pulled groin. May 20th against San Diego was his season debut. He went four and two-thirds. Get this. He struck out nine Padres, and he walked one. His fastball is 89 to 91, but he has a very short arm stroke, and you'll see today that it ball really jumps on hitters late with that deception. Originally signed by Baltimore back in 2011, he got hurt, had Tommy John surgery the following year. Cubs picked him up, and this is the D behind him. And Coughlin, Fowler, Soler, the outfield. Castro, Bryant, left side. Russell, Rizzo, right side. And David Ross behind the plate. Well, Chris Bryant had his 12-game hitting streak ended yesterday. But he's in the top eight in the league and on-base percentage. Top ten in RBIs. Everybody who's a Cub fan wanted to see him in the big leagues, ASAP, and... They finally brought him up with a couple of weeks into the season. Cool moment before the game. They had a World War II hero in front of the Cubs dugout. And, you know, thanks to all who have served or served our country today. Got a two-minute standing ovation. The ovation wouldn't stop. It just kept going and going and going. <laughs> and it was a serious goosebump moment. And I don't think there was a dry eye in the house. So happy Memorial Day to everybody. And thank you to all who have served our country. Absolutely.
The bricks in right field kind of falling, almost hit the bricks. And how often do you see that? The wall is padded down there a little bit, but he still dove head first toward the wall and made an unbelievable catch in foul territory. Well, you're you got your video back, folks, just in time to see that amazing play. That'll bring in Bryce Harper. Bryce is so hot he made the TV come back on. <laughs> he knew. <laughs> and the satellite knew you did not want to miss this at bat. That's how good he's going. No signal. Bryce steps up. We got a signal. Batting average is third in the league on base percentage first. Homers first. RBIs first. Runs first. And the 0 1. A little bit outside. Well, if you can have a good first inning and make this guy throw 20 or 25 pitches, you give the first base dugout a real good look at him as the left hander kind of facing the dugout because the Nats have only seen Wada on tape and now a chance to get at least. Four, five, maybe six hitters up against him in the first inning. Also, if you're Tanner Roark and you haven't started in a while, you'd like to take the mound with the lead. One and two to Harper. Ross setting up outside corner. Rice is going to be called out. Turns and walks away without a word on a fastball. Bryce has a pretty good eye. Was this pitch outside? David Ross maybe setting up off the plate, but Wada hit the target perfectly for strike three. Not a word from Bryce Harper to Ryan Blakeney. Ryan Zimmerman next. He's hit safely in 21 of his last 25 games. And checks in number six with 32 RBIs. Ryan during those 25 games has driven in 20 runs. Like sitting at Wrigley. Good success here over the years. Rizzo wasn't really on the bag holding Desmond there. They both had to retreat. 12 for 36 against lefties this year. 333 average, one home run, 11 RBI. Target well off the plate, outside. Where the changeup goes. Two balls, one strike. Everything appears to be back to normal now with our signals. Sorry about that as we just got ready for the first pitch. And we will show you the Denard Span home run at our first opportunity. We know you would love to see that. Fourth homer of the year, 14th RBI for Denard. That one would have been on Sheffield were it not for the new scoreboard. That's the street behind right field here. Target in. Ball three. You know, my first thought was when he hit that curve is that it's going toward the scoreboard. And I'm wondering if the scoreboard's actually blocking the wind. Yeah, I talked to some of the Cubs guys about that. They said it's a little early to tell. That scoreboard was just put up since the last homestand. There's the home run. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Ball on concrete, one nothing. Runner going, Zimmerman chops one to Starlin Castro. Struggling a bit at short. He's made nine errors this year. So here you go, folks. First at bat of the game, Denard Span digging in. Left-hander delivers and 
long, long gone. Almost took the cubby bear off the sea out there, but that's on top with an early run. Bank for the Achiever and you. And by Ocean City, Maryland, put your vacation days to good use in Ocean City, Maryland. Book now at OCOcean.com. Denard Spann off the newest scoreboard here at Wrigley. And the Nats an early run. The Cubs are 11th in the league in hitting, 6th in runs, 4th in homers. And they got some great young talent. Anthony Rizzo, 21 extra base hits. Nine homers, 29 RBIs. He's right behind Bryce Harper and on base percentage at 440. And he's a combination of high batting average and power, just like Bryce Harper is. Tanner Roark, fourth career appearance against the Cubs, third start. And a fastball's average at 93 this year out of the bullpen. It's up a tick. And the Nats know Dexter Fowler from his days in Colorado. In the month of May, Roark has appeared in six games. That's eight innings pitched. 0-0 record, one save, two holds, and an ERA in May of 1.13, 15 and 10 last year with a 2.85 and 31 starts. Yeah, not a bad extra arm to call on. Ryan Blackney took a good look at that. He saw the swing back action of the fastball and called it a strike. Right at the hitter. Chopper. Roark knew he had to get it on that second little hop up there before it hit the ground again. And a good play by Tanner to field his position. Well, it, it rained here all morning. For those of you that don't know, they have the tarp on the field. And right about here, you're wondering when Tanner Roark plants. Is his foot going to slide out from under him? It didn't. Nice play. One of the better fielding pitchers in all of baseball. Makes a nice play to start this one up. Here's Chris Bryant. And that's a fastball to the outside edge. That. Tanner tried to swing back there. On a pitch up. That's got a loud sound. And this game is tied. That's Chris Bryant's sixth big league home run. Wow, did you hear that? I heard it and I saw it. Little slider from Roark just stayed up about bell tie. Look at the short compact swing. Not a whole lot to it from Bryant. And actually a little top spin job gets out of here. Maybe it's going to be one of those days at Wrigley. Well, where that ball went out, it's only about 360 feet. It's 368 to the deep gaps here. I mean, that's the part of Wrigley Field that is really, really cozy. There's a check swing by Rizzo. 
That wind is picked up and it's blowing straight out. Rizzo's hit nine. Bryant just passed him in RBIs with 30. Tanner goes off speed and gets a swing and a miss. That's the Cubs' 44th homer. The Nats have hit 49. Jammed him really well. Left side. Over there's Wilson Ramos drifting with it. Not an easy play with that wind moving the ball around. And Wilson telling you now Escobar, hey dude, use a little help right there. Where are you? This ball kind of starts out toward the Cubbies dugout, then blown back. Nice play by Ramos. Flips the ball to Escobar, and they have a little laugh together after that one. Like, Come on, man. I got a catcher's glove on. Nice play. Here's Starlin Castro. He's batting cleanup for them. On a five game hitting streak. The two guys sitting in front of him have hit a lot more home runs than the guy hitting behind him. And the guy after him, Soler and Coughlin, have hit either the same or more home runs. Deep short, Desmond. He'll plant. And a little bit on the run, able to get a bunch of. Velocity behind that. Well played by Ian Desmond. A lot of things happening in the first inning. 1 1. Members out there, um, big thank you for all that you guys do. Um, thanks a lot. Happy Memorial Day. Well said, Matt Grace. Thank you, sir. Stars and stripes and baseball and Wrigley and the Nats. It's 1 1. We go to the top of the second. Ramos Espinosa Taylor inside some home run numbers with STG. Most home runs in the month of May. Updated with today's total one each so the Nats and the Cubs right there top of the league. Right now the Nats have tied Cincinnati for second in the league with 49 total. The Dodgers have hit 57. There's Wilson Ramos. A couple of offers after his 19 game hitting streak now. And you might have noticed the Nats wearing their script Washington and camo. Cubs are doing the same with their C. Great look for both teams are on a holiday. A very special one. Ramos at 286.
And that was probably close enough on which to be swinging. Ground ball, Addison Russell. I got some Geico highlights in case you missed it. I'm pretty sure you did in the first inning. Denard Span got it started up with a home run, a fastball up and in off the scoreboard and right. And then Chris Bryant, the phenom from the Cubs, another smooth swing. When you play in this ballpark as a visiting player, sometimes you have a tendency to swing too hard. I mean, it looks like you're playing in a band box. Both of those home runs smoothed out of here. Very easy swing by Denard Span, very easy swing by Chris Bryant. Danny Espinosa right-handed this year, nine for 24. So despite not that many at bats, this side of the plate has gone well for Danny. He's hit 307 his last 22 games with 10 RBIs. But I mean, if Chris Bryant and Anthony Rizzo are gap-to-gap -gap shooters in this ballpark, they will hit hundreds of home runs each. I mean, this place is made for somebody who hits line drives. From one side to the other. I mean, where it's 368 here, most ballparks are 375 or 380. I've been told the ballparks playing fair so far this year. When not really blowing out or blowing in one way or the other. Big slow breaking ball that Espinosa fouls. When Don Zimmer used to manage the Cubs, he said it was like managing three different ballparks. Big early band box in the middle of the season and then a little big again in September. You can see it's a long way down the lines. But man, when it gets to the gaps, it's cozy. But I love what they've done. The green scoreboards look great. One, two to Espinoza. Danny, did he check? No. Punched out by Mike DeMuro down at first base, two outs. Well, that's the out pitch for Wada. He uses a slider. Last time out with the nine strikeouts, tons of them looking to the Padres. He'll throw that slider at your back knee. He'll backdoor the slider to righties with two strikes. Start it off the plate and break it back. And he'll sneak that fastball in. He'll elevate the fastball with two strikes. But watch his delivery, his arm motion. His 89-90 plays a lot more firm than that speed you're seeing on the gun. Up the middle, well hit by Taylor. Russell gets it and throws out a speedy base runner. What a play. Well, that's a rookie who'll probably be playing second base here for a long, long time. Might be playing shortstop. He's actually better at short. base Wilson Ramos back behind the plate Jose Lobaton did a nice job yesterday for the Nats seems like he does every time he gets in there and you got one catcher who's known for his offense could flat out hit and is a good receiver and then what a luxury to have Jose Lobaton whenever to give Wilson Ramos a break 
and do what he did behind the plate. So you got two good ones if you're Matt Williams. Yeah, here in Chicago, they traded Wellington Castillo to Seattle. They're going with Miguel Montero, who they signed as a free agent after all his years in Arizona. And David Ross getting the call today. Tanner Roark, 11 pitches, nine strikes, first inning. Watch this guy swing. He does not get cheated. Jorge Soler. Pretty good numbers, tons of pop. From Havana, 23, and the Cubs signed him to a nine year free agent deal. And if I had that body, I'd own my own island right now. <laughs> I mean, that. 6'4, 215, yes. he's listed. Oh, he's, he's it's his body fat, about 3%, maybe. He's not 215. 292 in 24 games in his big league debut with five homers last year. Hit 307 in three years in the minor leagues. Inside the numbers with STG and Tanner Roark. Look at this list. Lowest DRA as a starter over the last three years. Minimum 225 innings. That's how valuable he is. I mean, that, that's the elite of the elite right there. Thanks for putting it back up. Kershaw, Harvey, Cueto, Grinky, Wainwright, Roark. Hot shot, second base, Danny Espinosa. So three straight for Roark since the Bryant home run. You know, you sign Max Scherzer, Tanner Roark, not a word. You go to the bullpen. Okay, whatever's best for the team. Really didn't pitch a whole lot in April, then all of a sudden got his first career save. Started using some more high leverage situations with a lead late in the game. And now here he is starting in front of his family in Chicago, Illinois. Yeah. And I mean, Matt Williams has to be counting his lucky stars that he has a six starter like Tanner Roark. Most teams he'd be a, a, at least a two starter. And I would hear from some of the F Nats fans on the, uh, the Nats website. We have a little thing there called Ask Bob and some people were just like he's wasting away in the bullpen. And I wasn't wishing well uh, badly on anybody up here but I said there will be a come a time I don't know when but the Nats are going to need Tanner Roark to start some games. Didn't think it was going to happen this early but you talk about luxury and he might be kind of a hybrid type pitcher that nobody else in the league has. I mean how do you count on a guy out of your bullpen and won 15 games last year and then whenever you need a start he's right there for you. And this could be on for a while this whole thing. Well Doug Fisher's going to start throwing again soon. Talked to him yesterday said his forearms feeling better never had anything like this before so a bit of a worry. The elbows fine. Nothing structurally wrong. 2 2 to Chris Coughlin. Former rookie of the year with the Marlins who's not hitting for high average here but he's doing some damage. Seven homers, 11 RBIs, and he's five for 10 career against Tanner Roark. Born in Maryland, played high school ball in Florida, went to Ole Miss. Favorite color is blue, and he likes long walks, walks on the beach. He's in the right place for both of those. <laughs> Didn't see many boats out today. The rain and uh, some of the weather scared off some of the sailboats in that as we were coming up north of Lakeshore Drive. Mercedes showing the at bat, everything away. 3 2 pitch with one out. And Roark just drills the strike and gets a foul ball. Codlin was the rookie of the year with the Marlins in 09 when he hit 321. Tailed off a bit after that and by. 2011 he was having all kinds of knee problems. Cup signed him as a minor league free agent. January of 2014. Roark is working so fast. Cup sitters are asking for time. Yeah I saw Ryan Blackney step out there and I thought he might get a memo. 3 2. Missing a little bit low. Coglin takes the base on balls with one out. 
All right, Nats fans and yoga fans, come off the ballpark Sunday, June 7th for the inaugural Yoga in the Outfield. The purchase of this special game ticket, enjoy 45-minute yoga session. Please do not do yoga poses in front of me while I'm... They put the center field camera on him. He's doing yoga poses in the dugout right now, or in the booth. Yoga in the Outfield tickets are limited, so be sure to buy the special event now. Astros.com slash yoga. They're going to be there, and they're really flexible. So is he. Him, not so much. David Ross, the catcher. It's interesting about David Ross. A couple of years ago, we were calling him a great offensive backup catcher. But his batting average has tailed off severely. 216 with the Red Sox in 13. 184 with Boston last year. Cubs signed him to a two-year deal. And he's Miguel Montero's backup. But he's always been a great receiver. Lifting one to right. Bryce broke back a little bit, but plenty of time to camp. Two outs. Now here's where the pitcher comes up number eight in Joe Madden's lineup. He does it with all of them. He'll do it with Hendricks tomorrow and John Lester. Watch Tanner Roar quick pitch David Ross right here. Kind of a big pause and then didn't pick up his foot. The ball got on Ross faster than he expected. He was late and flew out to right. You remember he varies his tempos. That wasn't because of Coughlin at first base. He's just trying to rush the hitter and he did it nicely. Watch, he'll pick up his knee here probably. See the difference? Yeah. Wada 0 for 1 this year with a walk. 1 for 21 as a major league hitter. He's 34 years of age. 5'11", 180. Won 107 games in Japan in a nine-year career with 36 complete games. Right in there. 93, 1-1. One, one. I like Joe Madden. He thinks out of the box. From his themed road trips to how he does the lineup every day, the mental aspect that he brings to a ball club. That ball's well hit by the pitcher. Here comes Taylor. Unbelievable reach and a catch. Tanner Roark, the biggest fan of that play, and that had RBI double written all over it. That ball was by him. That ball was past Michael Taylor, and he just threw his body out there and reached up with his left hand. Ken O'Rourke, what do you think? Yeah, you feel the same way. Just absolutely laying out on the water line drive in the gap. Watch this. It's by him. It's past him. He catches that over his head almost. Watch where his glove is. It's not out in front of him. It's behind him. And he actually took his eyes off the ball at the last second. Goes in his glove into a slide. And we did the same thing, Tanner. What a play by Michael Taylor. Unbelievable. Great play. Great pitcher reaction. And this one goes to the top of the third in a 1-1 score. That is some kind of athletic ability right there. Well, usually when you dive for a ball to your left in your right-handed guy and the gloves on your left hand, 
the glove's in front a little bit, maybe even with your eyes. That ball, the, his glove was behind his head, so the ball crossed his eyes, kind of went past his head, and he just put the glove up where he thought it was going to be. Amazing. Taking away a possible second big league hit for Suyoshi Wada. Here's Roark. Tanner this year 0 for 3, but he has 11 big league hits with an RBI. Roark spanned Desmond top of the third. And that's tailing to the outside edge. Probably feels good to get in that batter's box for Tanner Roark. He can hit. Eighty seven. What a first two innings, 25 pitches, 19 strikes. He's retired six straight since the Desmond infield hit that followed the span home run. That Tanner took it, thought it might be low. Probably thinking I'll take that call when I get back out there. Three K's. Probably the bottom of the zone. I thought it was a good pitch. And by the way, my Twitter is blowing up with I didn't say there goes the no hitter on Denard Span. So I did say it. I don't know if you did. Was, yeah, if I don't know if we were on or not. You might have missed it. I did say it. We're good. A lot of superstitious people out there. I love it. Denard Span. It's a pretty good pitch. Just a little bit away. Yeah, high fastball right down the middle, maybe a little bit on the inner half. Fourth tater. Yeah, he's on a pace here. When you look at some of the personal career numbers of Denard, his career high in home runs, eight for the 09 Twins when he hit 311 with a 392 on base percentage. As an Addy at four two years ago and five last year. Four already here. Not that he's thinking about home runs, but it's been impressive what he's done. One one pitch lifted left side. This will be close. Just over the Cubs dugout. Strike two. You're kind of thinking on the fly right now when you have, you know, the abdominal pulls that he had, the rehab that you do, you hit with your core. You hit with your lower half, your legs. Everybody thinks the big guns are what hits home runs. No, it's it's your lower half and your abs. So maybe in all that rehab he did, he's a little bit stronger than he's been in the past, and the ball seems to be jumping off his bat. Good call. One and two with one out. Good take. Could have went either way. To the side set of the screen. Denard. Slow and getting back in. There we go. 2-2. Two, two. That ball in on his hands. It's been interesting. There have been several times in the first couple of innings where Ross is set up away and the pitch has come inside. Turning into a beautiful day at Wrigley. Sun blazing now. It's going to be muggy. The ball's going to be carrying. Wind blowing out, and I mean those flags are moving. Target was in now back out there and span rifles one to left hanging up for Chris Coughlin. Not a lot of room for base hits in this ballpark. Not on the line. And then Ian Desmond and at bat you might have missed right after the span home run. Right back to the mound. Water thought he had it. Because you got back just in time to see Solaire Rob Escobar. At least it was a foul ball, and he made a great catch to take away the at bat. Got our video back at that point, so you're up to date with all the Nats ABs today. Ian Desmond, a 10 game hitting streak now, 13 for 39.
David Ross have a little talk with Ryan Blake. You know, he's setting up off the plate. Watt is hitting the target, but where Ross is setting is not in the strike zone. Look, he, he's almost out of the strike zone. 3-0. and oh. You do that when an umpire is showing you he'll give you a couple inches off the plate, not before, after he shows you that. You see if the green light's blazing here. Look, he's off the plate. On a 3-0 count. Desmond taking all the way. Pitch up, couldn't get it, 88. They're in the bottom of the sixth inning at New York. The Mets and the Phillies are tied at three. Trying to hit one over the new scoreboard in left center. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I had a feeling Ian will try to air it out a few times in this series. 3-2 pitch, Escobar on deck. Inside corner for the strikeout. And Desmond has a word with the rookie umpire, Ryan Blackney. First of all, Nissan will give us a look. You can read his lips. I thought it was a good pitch. Desmond didn't look like, according to Nissan, the pitch track. Desmond was right. Nets go one, two, three. One, one ball game. Matt Williams called Tanner Roark to have a conversation with him about his role. Roark told me this spring that conversation lasted all of about four minutes. Williams told him to keep preparing to be a starter, but he might need to go to the bullpen. Then they talked about the weather for a little bit, and that was it. Roark said, I'm not the type to moan about my role. What am I going to do, complain about it? Nobody cares. Well, he's a team guy. That doesn't surprise me a bit. Yeah. It's Addison Russell, the Cub rookie. And he'll guide one over near the bullpen. Off the brick wall. No balls, two strikes. Russell is 21. They got him in a trade with Oakland. Involving that deal July 5th. Jeff Samarja, Jason Hamill going from here to the Bay Area. Which we all thought at the time clinched the world championship and best team on the planet for the Oakland A's. And it didn't work out that way. Fastball up. So look what the Cubs have to show for that. He was a first rounder for the A's 11th player overall taken just three years ago out of Pace High School in Florida. Just a baby too huh. Yeah. One there of the few is. guys younger than Bryce Harper and that's a good swing back eater. Tanner Roark first strikeout. And yeah, starts the two seamer off the plate runs it back. And Addison Russell gave up on a good pitch Tanner Roark. I said in the open, and I'll say it again, I miss Tanner Roark pitching every fifth day. Cubs brought in a veteran guy to lead off in Dexter Fowler. 
who had 276 at Houston last year with an on base percentage of 375. But the Astros totally committed to youth now. And that ball high in the air, right center. Bryce Harper tracking it at the edge of the track. Makes it on the run, two outs. Nice play, Bryce Harper. The Washington National fans' choice flex packs are on sale now. Choose from some of the season's best matchups. When you pick four games, guess what? You get one free. Go to nationals.com slash flex to pick your games today. And you can watch that guy play in his white uniform. Here's Chris Bryan, who's 23 years of age. He went to Bonanza High School in Vegas. On to the University of San Diego, where he hit 54 home runs in three years, including 31 just prior to getting drafted. And a bouncer. Here comes Desmond. Bare hand. Couldn't make connections. And that was probably his only chance. Bryant runs well. Yeah, you don't think of Chris Bryant and fast in the same sentence. You think about the home runs, but he can really run. He's very athletic, and Ian Desmond did the right thing here. I think if he gloves that, Bryant's safe based on his speed, how he got out of the box, and kind of seeing the whole play develop from up here. That was the right decision by Desmond. Agreed. So he has the Cubs only two hits. Here's Anthony Rizzo who fouled out on a good play by Wilson Ramos first time. Uh, Mentioning the speed, Brian has stolen five out of six. The okay. Cubs as a team, 42 steals, only Cincinnati with more. Be careful on the first pitch. Wow. I don't think this duo is going to be hitting second and third for long. These guys have number three and four hitters written all over. Yeah, Tanner being careful, a little off speed there, 2 0. Danger count. Three change ups in a row. Two and one the count. Danny Espinosa short right field. Desmond up the middle. Rizzo takes a big cut, fouls it back. More numbers from STG. Slugging percentage leaders, along with on base percentage, means OPS, and they are all special. Now look at the numbers. Four guys over one point, whatever. Bryce's in the month of May is 1.798 his OPS in this month. I, I don't know how you do that. Hit taters and walk a lot. Yeah. Three and two to Rizzo. Bryant will get a head start here with two outs. Hits one well to right. Harper going back. Bryce has it. Slamming into the brick behind that ivy. It we hope handy. Rice's hand is okay. I'm not talking about we show all the offensive highlights with Bryce Harper. He's playing gold glove right field this year. Another great play by Harper.
Wrigley Field. And the Ivy does nothing to slow you down. And Bryce Harper, who's done a nice job judging fences and warning tracks this year, did everything right there, made a great play. And I think used his right hand to stop him from running into the wall. And it might be a wrist deal. We've been watching him in the dugout between innings, kind of rolling his wrists. He's up second. He's in the batter's box, and he looks like he's okay. Giving everybody high fives with his glove going to the dugout after the play. And we'll see. Bill Vett planted that ivy in 1937, and some outfielders haven't been real happy about it since. And a big curveball is in there. Yunel Escobar leads off top of the fourth. Target away. Escobar pulls it. Backhanded short. Starlin Castro. So here comes Bryce. No glove on the left hand, but a glove on the right. That'd be the first place he hasn't gotten booed this year when they say his name. I noticed that during the pregame intros. Well, I think if he keeps doing what he's doing and stays very humble about it like he has in the postgame press conferences, what's not to like? Guy plays hard, he's playing as good as anybody, and he's humble. Boom. Harper just ripping one into the right field corner. That's a deep corner out there. He's thinking three until they stop him. And up with it in a hurry, Jorge Soler. Bryce Harper, 26th extra base hit. Um, I think the wrist is okay. I mean, this one's shot out of a cannon. A little slider right there from Wada. Harper catches it out front. Was going hard into second base, but Soler does a nice job of barehanding this ball. Look at Bryce look down there. Look again and thought better of it. Stayed at second base. One out's when you do try to stretch a double into a triple, but Bryce made the right decision. Nationals first base hit since the first inning. Wada had retired ten in a row. Got Ryan Zimmerman on a bouncer to short first time. Maybe he was thinking if I stretch this double into a triple and something happens at third, I'll get criticized for it, so I'll just stop at second. Well, Solaire got a straight bounce off the Ivy right at where it meets that gate out there. If that ball had gone to the right even a couple of feet, Bryce would have gone. So the right fielder got a bit of a break on that ball. Because as we mentioned, it's 350 plus down the lines here. Longer run than usual for corner outfielders. Target in. I made some plays down there in that right field corner with that high fence and the foul pole. You're going in there and you just feel like you're you're playing in a, a cardboard box because you're not used to having everything enclosed around you. So it gets real quiet down there. You really can't hear the fans down that corner. You're real isolated and it's just unlike any other place in baseball. 2 1 on the corner. Two balls, two strikes. And if you're a baseball fan that just loves different things around both leagues, if you haven't done it, I would urge you to pick up George Will's book, a nice little place on the north side that George wrote last year, celebrating 100 years of Wrigley. It's a really great read about some of the crazy things that have happened here over the years. A ballpark built on the site of a seminary called Wiegman Park to begin with. It was actually open for two years before the Cubs moved here. Only Fenway 1912 older than Wrigley built in 1914. Three two with one out. There's that target away again. Zimmerman takes the ball down low two on one out. 
for the achiever in UPNC Bank with our minor league report. He's in the Nats bullpen. Taylor Jordan just recalled. Good numbers at AAA. And uh, after the Nats had to go long with a couple of bullpen situations over the weekend, A.J. Cole was sent back to Syracuse and Taylor recalled. A.J. Cole did a nice job. But, you know, he spent for a while. You need somebody else just in case, especially with Tanner Roark not being stretched out yet. So Taylor Jordan gets the call. There's Wilson Ramos who hit the ball to the second baseman first time up. Rado with a big roundhouse curveball drops it in there at 73. Little pop fly and Rizzo after it. He'll get there. Bryce Harper tags and goes to third alertly. Second base was unoccupied for a while. But Addison Russell was running back over there. Ryan Zimmerman staying home at first. Boy, there's been some fantastic defense in this game. Michael Taylor's catch, Bryce Harper's catch. Now add Anthony Rizzo to the list on a nifty over-the-shoulder basket catch. And he did a nice job throwing it across the infield. Heads up by Bryce Harper. They actually appealed second base to see if Bryce left early. Umpires say safe. Runners at the corners, two outs. A little fumble action here at the end, right? Hit him in the right on the edge. Corrals it. Nice play. That's a lot to deal with when you're crossing a couple of home plates down there, the bullpens, which, as Dan told us, will be removed from the field here in the next couple of years at Wrigley. When you play 81 games at your home park, you know every crack, crevice, where you're at at all times. Here's Espinosa struck out swinging on a pitch in the dirt first time actually tried to check and couldn't so the lead runs at third base Zimmerman at first here top of the fourth Danny not biting. Well, this makes sense for a green light, right? With water, you don't know if you're going to get a 3 1 change up, slider, curveball. You know you're going to get a 3 0 fastball right here. So you'd think Espinosa could be firing away right here if he gets a strike. Something right down the middle, swing easy, put the barrel on it, see what happens. Low bases loaded. Danny Espinosa, 17th walk of the year. Smart people covering the important news stories. It's not Bob and I from all the right places. That's the WUSA Morning News joining us tomorrow. Well, not us, but them tomorrow. Starting at 425 on WUSA 9. You join us at that hour. I don't know what you're going to get. Like I said, I'll just be getting in. Michael A. Taylor's had an influence on this ball game with his speed and his glove. Now a chance to bust the Nats on top. Bases loaded, pitcher on deck. So Watt has got to go after Michael A. right here. Misses with that first pitch breaking ball, enhancing Taylor's chances of seeing some hard stuff in this well, he's AB. Had one at bat with the bases loaded. <laughs> Guess what he's done? Straight away center field in Arizona to win a ball game two weeks ago. Grand Tater. That was fantastic. Didn't go. Did they check that? They didn't even check. I'm no. checking that if I'm David Ross. Now, I think he's asking him. Yeah, Chris Bazio, their pitching coach, coming out to the mound here. Looks like a 2-0 to me. I Did mean, he go? I would check it just because, right? 
I mean, he didn't go. Yeah. Not close. Oh, there might be an injury here. Hold oh on. Oh, boy. Oh, it could be the translator. Got it. My bad. I think he's asking, what do you want to throw here? Trainer, translator. Bryce Harper with one out of double. I'm just thankful no massage therapists get to visit well, the mound during the game. Maybe like the Marlins and their GM and their manager, it's both a trainer and a translator. So you saw Zimmerman and Espinoza who walked. Plot thickening here for Taylor and Wada on a 2 0 count. Low strike. He's looking for something with a little more elevation in that pitch. Pitch number 60 coming. Change up on two and one. Mercedes Benz will track it. But I, I like what Ryan Blackney's doing. He, he, David Ross is setting up off the plate pitch track like that, but that was the way he caught it presented as a ball. We, we showed you Jose Lobaton and how he was pulling strikes and, and stealing strikes yesterday. David Ross right there did the opposite. Took that one out of the zone. Three one pitch. Eighty eight and now all the runners will be on the move. A little cut fastball right here, 88. Watch it come across the plate. A little slider action to it. If I'm Michael Taylor, I'm sitting fastball right here. You throw anything else, you got me. I'm looking right down the middle. He the, has to throw a strike. Capacity crowd on its feet here. Swing and a miss on 89 down and in. The National Strand. Their second, third, and fourth runners of the day. And on the north side of Chicago, it's 1 1. Bottom of the fourth inning all the talk before this one about Bryce Harper playing Chris Bryant guys that grew up close to each other in the Vegas area. Bryant recently saying he saw Bryce throw 80 when he was 11 years old. He goes up there and hits a tater his first time up. He's two for two. And then Bryce Harper after running in the fence making a really nice catch looked like something happened to his wrist. Came up second batter of the inning. A double down the corner, so it looks like the wrist is okay. Bryce actually tweeted at Chris Bryant spring training and said, if Chris Bryant doesn't make the big league team out of camp, then that's a joke. I see you doing your thing, brother. Hashtag <laughs> Vegas made, hashtag the truth. So 
It's good to see him playing against each other here today. Very nice. Castro first pitch swinging bottom of the fourth. Desmond throws him out. More on the Vegas connection from Mass and Dan. Bob Brian said earlier today that the first time that he played with Bryce was when he was nine and Harper was seven. And even then, Bryant remembers Harper being bigger and stronger than everyone else. Was impressed even at that age by how hard Harper threw and how far he hit the ball. He said, I expected nothing less than Bryce getting here and doing this. And Harper said that kids called Bryant silk back then because everything he did was so smooth. Bryant said, hopefully, this offseason they can get together, play some golf, and work out together. They'd like that. And we only see the cup six or seven times a year. Okay, okay with that. I would pay <laughs> top dollar to see both of those guys on a tee box with a driver in their hand. Yeah. I'd imagine they could, I don't know, 400 yards in their sleep. Roark to Soler. He gets jammed and strong enough to move it up the middle. Some lows never stop improving the Cubs through their first 43 games since 2010. Joe Madden's got them playing well. You know, Joe Madden, ironically enough, Kirby, remember us talking about how batting practice might be a dinosaur coming up in the you know next 10 years or so, how nobody takes infield anymore? Yeah. He's real big on his guys just hitting in the cage and not hitting on the field and kind of conserving their energy for the game and for later in the season. They only hit on the field two or three times a week. Wow. Joe Madden, 41st year in pro baseball, 22nd in the big leagues, and his 10th full season as a major league manager. I don't know, you just kind of have the feeling that a lot of things, Madden coming over, the young kids coming up, they signed Lester. A lot of things converging for the Cubs right now that will make them a really good ball club over the next. Well, who knows how many years? Well, you got 23 at third base, 21 at second base. And Addison Russell supposedly better at shortstop than his second. Yeah. He only played five games at second in the minor leagues. And Castro still just 25. Runner moving, great throw, and. The way that Wilson Ramos threw that, it's almost as if he knew he had a lot of time just get it on target. Two outs. Well, Joe Madden will do this with contact guys up. It's not so much a hit and run. He just likes to get guys in motion to stay out of the double play. He was betting on Coglin putting this one in play, but you see Roark with the changeup, Coglin out front, and Wilson Ramos with an easy throw down there to get Jorge Soler. Wilson Ramos this year, 5 for 15, 33% now caught stealing. Ace is empty, two outs, and Coughlin now a one-two count. Not picking up the changeup from Tanner Roark. Might get another one. What's the batter's eye like here for day games? Pretty good. See that kind of bushy section over the center field wall? And then that dark section, that's what it really comes out of. You see the ball well. Yeah, that was a new center field club. Fans are behind that. With the Cubs added years ago, dark glass out there. Sometimes Rush Street the night before makes the batter's eye. <laughs> Not the best in the league, but. So other guys have told you that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I used to love getting to first base and listening to Mark Gray stories here. I said he had some legendary ones. 3 2 pitch pulled. Espinosa there. What a good inning for Tanner Roark and his catcher for that matter. Roark a lead off top five in a 1 1 game.
Day, brought to you by USAA. For those who gave everything that we may breathe free, we honor you. By Navy Federal Credit Union, proudly serving the armed forces and their families for over 80 years. And by DynCorp International, we serve today for a better tomorrow. And we air today's game on Masson in recognition of Memorial Day. We'd like to thank all past and current members of the U.S. military for their work and dedication in protecting our country. We've been given a beautiful baseball day for it now. Veterans in the house, we salute you. Tanner Roark leads off top five. I wrote my grandfather's tie today. Served our country in World War II in the Navy. My late grandpa Joe. Roark guides one left side base hit. Just kind of reaching down and leveling off Tanner's first base hit of the year, the 12th of his big league career. Oh, he had to get a knock for Wilmington, Illinois, didn't he? Just throws it out there. Nice effort by Bryant. But leadoff man aboard here. And a leadoff man that can run a little bit, I might add. Yeah. That's the Nets' first leadoff hit since Denard Spann did the ultimate leading off the game by leaving the yard his ninth career leadoff homer and his second this year. Did it to Josh Colmenter in Arizona. Lays down a good bunt. Left-hander has to wheel and fire. Good play by Wada. Roark to second base and with a good running pitcher, you can do the sacrifice there. Well, I just love the fact that the Nats have played small ball the last couple of days. If they continue to do the little things offensively, like bunt guys over, you know, lead off double over to third base, picking up runners. I mean, that bodes well for October baseball. When you get into the playoffs, you're facing A plus staffs. You're, you're in colder temperatures where the ball doesn't carry. Home runs don't really play in October as much as moving guys over, getting guys in, doing all the little things. That's how you win a World Series. Just ask the Giants. I love when I see the Nats do little things like this. Two shots to take the lead now with Desmond and Escobar. Or this. And maybe it won't even take a hit to take the lead. On a ball in the dirt, Tanner Roark gets a good secondary and off he goes. Well, Max Scherzer did this the other day. It was a one-run game. He was up there and he said, I, I, I'm going to get a base hit. I'm going to score a run. And Tanner Roark kind of following suit right here. Base hit, sacrifice bunt, reads the ball in the dirt. Right-hander Justin Grimm now for the Cubs. Pitch count mounting. It's only the fifth inning, and Wada came into this frame with 62 pitches. So here come the Cubs in on the infield. And this is where Ian Desmond may need to elevate something, but just not be in pull mode right here. Yeah. A lot of times Ian gets really big in these situations. If he thinks right back at Wada or even to right center field where the new bleachers are, it'll help him stand the ball longer and get the job done. 1-1 one, one count, target in. Yes, an inside out swing. Hit streaks. Ian Desmond now into double figures behind Josh Harrison and Buster Posey. Brought to you by Jeep. This is where Wada likes to start the slider off the plate away and bring it back. Can't give up on anything outside right here. Looks like they're going in. Well, they tied him up on the last pitch, and he unable to see that one low. Counts 2 2. Nats have had Wada off the stretch in the last two innings. Bases loaded last inning. He struck out Michael Taylor to end it. called out for the second time in a row. Nissan will track it. The second time, same location. I, I think this is off the plate in just because Ross is setting up off the plate in. But if it's close enough to call, you got to find a way to try to get to that, I guess, perfect pitch by water. Appeared to be not on pitch track, but as far as the game goes, and now it's up to Escobar. Infield can back up. 
He has fouled out to right on a great play by Soler, who Anthony Rizzo just waved in about eight steps. And then a ground ball to the shortstop. Escobar, third time up yesterday. The triple was his 50th hit of the year. One ball game very well played defensively on both sides. Wada able to make big pitches when needed. Tanner Roark efficient for the Nats. Production count for Escobar here. Three guys with 20 or more. Escobar came into this one hitting nearly 370 for the last three weeks. Time for one of those two out RBIs. And I think some hitters have found out today if it's close on two strikes, you better be hacking. Bryce Harper got that baseball from the ball boy and handed it to a youngster down in the first row. Now the Cubs crowd cheering for a third out again. And Escobar just got a piece of it. Bryce will give out another souvenir. Two and two to Escobar. Pretty good fight here. It's got to you see how Escobar's kind of leaning out over, protecting the outside. This is. When Wada usually comes with that paralyzer fastball on the inside that he just threw to Ian Desmond. And I'm sure David Ross is seeing the same thing that I'm seeing. Let's see if they try to go in here with the heater. Change up. Ross moving to his right. Escobar takes it. Full count. Bryce Harper on deck. In the air to right. And staying in play for Soler. What a lot of pitches, nearly 80, but still hanging in there.
Happy Memorial Day. Thank you, Mom and Dad. Well, there's been some serious leather flashed around Wrigley Field today, including Michael Taylor. We're going to show you some good defense. He started with Ian Desmond. Well, actually, he started with Jorge Soler diving in the corner, and then Ian Desmond going to the hole. How about this catch by Michael Taylor? Wow. On left center field. You won't see a better one all year. Tanner Roark digging it. And then Bryce Harper going back on a well-hit baseball. That was off the bat of Anthony Rizzo to end the third inning. So some good D here at the yard. Yeah, Bryce was taking the high fives with his glove there, protecting the hand for a moment. He came right out and ripped the double. He'll lead off in the top of the sixth. Meanwhile, bottom five, the Cubs have Ross, Wada, and Russell. Catcher, pitcher, second baseman, 7 8 9. Yeah, we kind of short change Anthony Rizzo there, too. He made a nice little running play down in the Nats bullpen over the shoulder. So there's been some great plays all over. David Ross, fly ball to Harper first time. Tanner Roark threw four innings, 53 pitches, 36 strikes. The number 70 was mentioned over the weekend by Matt Williams, but if Tanner's rolling, he might be the one who decides because he's just working the ball as he always does, working that zone in and out, up and down, changing speeds effectively. Ross facing him today for the first time. Couldn't stop his swing. He might have had something bite him in the wrist right there when he did try to stop his swing. Goes with a heater. I mean, the slider to Chris Bryant, the first one he tried today, didn't slide. Bryant hit it for his. Sixth home run of the year, and that's the only, I guess, mistake that Tanner Roark's made today. Only strikeout. Russell looking in the third. Ramos helped him, throwing out Solaire running in the fourth. <laughs> Roark was ready and Ross requested time and got it. Tanner ready again. One ball, two strikes. Pass ball off the plate. And it's a curveball that froze the hitter from the inside part of the plate all the way over to the other side. Mercedes will show it. I will show you the curveball, but the fastball before the sixth pitch of the sequence is why David Ross got buckled on that curveball. So he moved him with the fastball in. Now Ross is thinking he's going to pound me in there again. He starts his swing early or his thought process early, looking for the fastball in, and the curveball locks him up. Here's Su Yoshi Wada, who took a great swing last time up, and Michael Taylor robbed him. But the reason he's hitting right now is because Bryce Harper. Is leading off the six, and that's probably going to be his last hitter of the game. Yeah, they're continuing to work their bullpen. And also, he had a pretty good swing last time. That's a big curveball that'll send him back to the dugout. Three K's in the game, two in a row here. Time for Toyota K's for kids. Washington area Toyota dealers want to help children, their families, by making a donation of $37 to the Children's Inn at NIH for every strikeout by Nats pitcher this season. Addison Russell. Yeah, there's that big scoreboard in left. Another one in right. The Cubs aren't going to put balls and strikes and outs and information on other games up on those two boards they want the focus still to be the old time traditional scoreboard here but they're going to use those two new boards to have lineups up there updated batting averages high in the air right side it looks like it's leaving and then it comes twisting back and Ryan Zimmerman able to reach over the rail 
A great one, two, three for Roark. Top of the six. Honda do up and rev up the engine because it's Bryce Harper first. A double today. Zimmerman has walked and then Wilson Ramos to follow. 1 1. Good ball game after five. Yeah, some rock and roll highlights for you here. Going to the top of the sixth inning. Harper, a hard double, right field corner last time up. So the Harper batting average sitting at 336. One beast percentage in the mid 470s. Look out here, two and zero. Oh. Bullpen still busy. Blake Trinan throwing for the Nets. Roark's at 66 pitches, close to that 70 mark Matt Williams mentioned over the weekend. And Bryce did not get a heater on two and zero. Oh. Got one there and it missed three and one. 2 0 change. Does he get a 3 1 change? This could be loud. But he hit it straight up. One. Starlin Castro and now the ball drifting to the other side. Addison Russell back tracking to grab it. Ladies, it's all about you. Thursday, June 18th at the Nats Park where the Nats take on the Rays. Enjoy a night out with the girls, including dancing, live music, wine, food samples, and player visits. With the purchase of this special game ticket, ladies 21 and older receive a Nationals acrylic wine glass with lanyard and access to the pregame party. Purchase these special event tickets. Visit nationals.com slash ladies night. Joe Madden coming out to get his left-hander. Who pitched five and a third, four hits, a run, two walks, six Ks. This call to the bullpen packaged by the UPS store. Your one stop shop for all your small business needs. Let us handle your mailbox service needs. We love logistics.
five and a third. 83 pitches, 51 strikes. Pitch out of some jams. Gets his team into the sixth inning. Here's Justin Grimm. Yeah, fastball averaging 94, slider 84, changeup. He very rarely throws, and there's a curveball in there at 82. Ninth appearance. Look at the ERA. Opponents hitting just 143 against Justin Grimm. Ryan Zimmerman career, one for two with a double against him. And a walk. Bolts the fastball at the knees. 94, says the board here. Ryan, a ground ball to short and a walk. Drops in a vertical breaking ball right there. 26 year old right hander, 6'3, 210. Originally drafted by Texas. Cubs got him. In the Matt Garza deal two years ago. I got that one a little low. And so does David Ross. That didn't feel good. One one ball game since the first inning. Since the second Cubs batter of the first inning. Ball had just enough run on it to get up and in on Ryan. So Span hits his ninth career home run leading off a game. Desmond singles. The next hit Harper's one out double in the fourth. And the next hit after that, Tanner Roark leading off the fifth with a base hit. Made it to third, but Wada made some big pitches when he had to. And that breaking ball hit up the middle to his left. Castro. Close play. Got Ryan for the second out. And once a cap passed the mound, you're thinking, is this hit slow enough for an infield single? Castro took an extra step. That made it a little more close at first base. Bang, bang play. Wilson Ramos won for two with a double career against the Cubs right hander. Ninety six right in there. Target will look where Ross is out there and he missed his spot. Ramos hits it a ton. See you later. And the Nats have given Tanner Roark a chance to be the winner. Ramos is third of the year, second in a week, and it's a 2 1 game. And there's nobody to throw the ball back. When Wilson Ramos is locked in, that's where his power is. He'll hit off speed to the pull side, he'll cheat to a fastball on the pull side for a home run. But when his hands are right and they're in the right slot, he'll go to right center. Beautiful swing by Wilson Ramos to give the Nats a lead. Well, maybe starting to warm up the power bat Ramos. Who was 0 for 14 before that at bat. And that's off the plate inside. Wilson had that long hitting streak. A couple of offers and man did he paste that one. Danny Espinosa faces Grimm for the first time. First homer the right hander has given up this year. Leagues came in actually the National League because the Cubs haven't played an interleague game yet. Hitting 143 against him.
2-0 here. Espinosa on the attack out in front. So 95 miles an hour, just dropped the barrel on it. Right down the middle, you see Ross was set out, set up off the plate away. The ball came right back down the middle, and this hits an invisible Cubs fan right in the forehead. That had to hurt. Yeah. It's Left at 101. 101. And if you look at the little flags up on the roof here, they're blowing straight out to right. And that's how I always used to tell as an outfielder in this ballpark. Look at the top of the stadium where the fans are sitting right here behind home plate. Those little flags will give you an idea because it's such a low ballpark that a lot of fly balls get over yeah. the top deck here. And that's where the wind influences the ball the most. And by the way, uh, I was told the Cubs cannot raise the roof here renovating at the grandstand when they do that because it's a national landmark and they're not allowed to do it. Okay. So those flags will be a good read for a lot of years. Espinosa strikes out. The Nats with a blast by Ramos retake the lead here as this ball game goes to the bottom of the sixth inning. We're going to have a special Memorial Day moment. of silence as a collective unified expression of gratitude to the heroes who lost their lives while protecting the freedoms we enjoy today. Thank you. Everything in their service to our country. Yeah, including those who were, were never found and their families and all the sacrifices and hard times they've had to go through over the years. We salute all of you on this Memorial Day. Blake Trinan takes over for the amazing Tanner Roark, who gave three hits, one run in five innings. Top of the order for the Cubs, Dexter Fowler, who has never faced Trinan before, strike one. There's some sort of ritual going on in the Cubs dugout right now. They just emptied like five bags of seeds over the rail all in unison hmm. before this inning started. Maybe some sort of superstition they got going. There it is. All the pitchers right there on the rail. Maybe those are pumpkin seeds. And with Trinan ready, Fowler stepping out. No balls, two strikes. Dexter has bounced back to Roark and hit a fly ball to Bryce Harper. Swing and a miss. 86 on the nasty breaking ball. Fourth K by the Nats staff today. So gear up for a upper 90s fastball. What do you get? An upper 80s slider. 
Blake Trinan continues to impress with the off speed stuff just as much as the fastball. Here's a power matchup for you Trinan and Bryant. Chris Bryant, two for two today. Fastball up. A former closer, Jason Mott, member of the Cubs bullpen. There's that 97 sinker boring in on the right handed batter. Bryant has two of the three Cubs hits. Base hit over Roark's glove in the third after the homer in the first. Or hey, Soler, the other base hit. 97 on the outer edge. Throw one in, throw one away. Bryant committed to the inner half, thinking I got to really get going on that fastball to get my barrel out there. Couldn't reach the fastball away. No swing. Pretty good pitch besides the swing, wasn't it? I I'm thinking this is a strike. Could have gone that way. Two two. It's a rookie spinning on a pretty good slider right there. Got him. Just like strike two this one to that outside edge. I'm telling you that whole sequence between Blake Trinan and Chris Bryant. You see pitch number four. That's the pitch. The first strike on the inner half got Bryant thinking about the fastball in. So now if I'm a right-handed hitter and a guy's got a good sinker and it's coming toward me in upper 90s, I have to cheat to get to it. And that was on his mind, that whole at bat, and that fastball away probably looked like a pitch out to Chris Bryant because mm -hmm. he was looking in. Now Blake trying into the lefty Rizzo, who has fouled out to Ramos and then hit that scream in a right that Bryce Harper pulled in in front of the wall. Rizzo 0 for 2 career against Blake. It's the fastball out ahead. 1 1. Phillies are batting in the top of the ninth at New York. The Mets got three in the bottom of the six, so they're up 6 3, trying to win that one and catch up with the Nats, who lead by two and a half. Blake China wants a new baseball. He wants one with higher seams so he can throw a slider to Anthony Rizzo here. One, two, and one. Well, Ramos tried to frame the sinker. Another pretty good pitch. Look where Bryce Harper's playing. He's almost got his heels on the warning track. Rizzo, fair ball. Bryce gets a good carom. This could be interesting. Here it comes, but it's off wide. And Rizzo with a two out double. So quick on this fastball down and in. We always talk about Bryce Harper covering the upper 90s fastball in the inner half. That pitch was actually off the plate in. Rizzo got his hands inside the baseball, kept it fair. And knew he had to shift into another gear once he saw Bryce Harper play that perfectly off the wall. I thought he had a chance to get him here, but he was in such a rush, which he had to be, to throw his little off the line. 12th double the season for Rizzo. That was a beautiful piece of hitting by the Cubs' first baseman. Yeah, that's his 22nd extra base hit of the year. Starlin Castro won for two career against Blake Trinan with a single. Has pulled it twice to Ian Desmond today. Watch where this pitch is to Anthony Rizzo. This is upper 90s. And watch him just pull his hands. That's off the plate in and down. Just drops the barrel on it. Turns it around. It's an impressive piece of hitting.
And a 1-1 count. Ball driven to center. Span back. He's there. And then the ball kind of carries him a little farther. Got a bad read on it. Sometimes in the day here, it's tough to see balls straight away center field. Denard Span with a nice adjustment. Saves the day. And why not? 1-1 one, one ball game. It's been about the tater today. First to Dart Span, then Chris Bryant, and then Wilson Ramos. An opposite field job to make this a 2-1 game. That is your T-Mobile game changer to this point. Cubs will bring in their third pitcher today, right-hander Jason Mott. Tommy John surgery a couple of years ago. Derailed his career in St. Louis and now he's a Cub. Taylor pushing a hard bunt, but too hard. But Rizzo misses it. Ball rolled right up over the thumb of his first baseman Smith. And Michael A. Taylor is aboard here in the seventh. A little. Weird hop right there. You see him take his eye off the ball and look at the runner and the base, and that was the difference. You can see the frustration for Anthony Rizzo, leadoff man aboard here, and that was almost the fourth home run today. He bunted that so hard. <laughs> yeah, that ball gets by Rizzo. Who knows what happens? It's a triple. And Blake Trinan stays in to sacrifice here. They must really like the way he's throwing. That's not a good bunt. And Ross gets there, but he can't squeeze it. Pretty good effort by David Ross. I mean, he's going through an on deck circle. There's bricks approaching. And David Ross has always played as hard as anybody in this game. Good effort, just couldn't stick in his glove. And, I mean, he's lucky there's. You know, we always show you all that stuff in the on deck circle the donuts the rosin the sleeves the three bats there's nothing in the on deck circle here at Wrigley Field zero. Huh. Blake has one at bat this year and it was a successful sacrifice but now it's 0 and 2. Yeah, where's all the stuff there's no stuff there's usually a sporting goods store in the on deck circle there's nothing crickets oh, it's all around the corner there it is. Yeah. Maybe because it's so close and in play here. That's a good idea. David Ross might have got hurt right there, even with the gear on. Trinan gets the bunt down on two strikes. So two at bats this year, and Blake. Has sacrificed successfully both times. Nice and done. Not easy. Especially when you 
don't do it very often. So anytime a reliever comes in and gets a sacrifice punt down at two strikes. One run game Nats trying to extend their lead. Got some speed at second base way to go. Denard Spann facing Jason Mott for the first time. Infield to pull as Castro starts shading up the middle right behind Michael A. Taylor. 89 upstairs. Cubs have three lefties, one of them Zach Ross Cup up and throwing. Fastball back up there for Mont. It's averaging 95 this year. You remember back in 2012 with the Cardinals, it was averaging 97. He would touch 100 at times. Way back to the first batter of this baseball game. Happy Memorial Day, Denard Span, off the new scoreboard and right. Second this year, ninth of his career. And Denard's now hit leadoff home runs every year since 2009. Strike call, inside edge. So he had a four year streak with the Twins, and now three consecutive years has hit at least one leadoff homer as a net. Target away on one and two. That was a fastball. That was probably right on the edge. Great promotions, great giveaways. Potomac Nationals in town May 27th through June 2nd. Go to the website or call the number on your screen for more information. One and two, Span rips it right side. Handcuffing Russell for a moment, two outs. Taylor to third. Two out opportunity now for Ian Desmond, who's 0 for 2 career against Jason Mott. Ian Desmond's had a rough day. With Ryan Blakeney behind the plate. A couple of strike threes that looked like they might have been in. And we'll see if they go back in there again. Yeah, called out on strikes in the third and the sixth. He got a pitch in on him. Couldn't get around quick enough. It got him on the trademark there. And Coglin makes the grab. It's the Hyundai seventh inning stretch at beautiful Wrigley Field. It's turned into a wonderful day for holiday baseball. The Nets by one.
losses and uh, have a happy Memorial Day. Well said, Tanner, and well done on the mound today. Five innings, three hits, a run, a walk, three strikeouts, 66 pitches, 46 strikes. And he was running that fastball back today, using the breaking ball. Strikeouts didn't come till the third inning, and then he struck out two of his last three guys. Gave up the homer to Chris Bryant, but a lot of pitchers have done that lately. So here we go to the bottom of the seventh, and Blake Trinan, 17 pitches, 10 strikes. In his sixth inning of work, faces Jorge Soler, Chris Coughlin, and David Ross, bottom of the seventh. Then he runs back to 95. Blake has been free and easy with the heater and his slider today. Well, he, he's more relaxed when he has some time. Little pop fly, and the pitcher will catch it. Wasn't in the air long enough, or that hit the ground. Yeah, I think he hit it off his okay, foot. Okay, sorry about that. Wasn't in the air long. Same thing. One ball and two strikes. Smart people covering the important news stories from all the right places. WUSA 9 Morning News Difference. Join them tomorrow morning starting at 425 on WUSA 9. There's a good fastball. 97 painting the corner. Blake Trinan has struck out three of the five men he's faced. So if you're the Cubs, you face a 15-game winner from 2014 in Tanner Roark for a few innings, and then you face a youngster throwing 98 miles an hour with a nasty slider after that. How deep are the Nats in their pitching staff? Teams just don't have this luxury. Most teams, I should say. Yeah. I mean, usually when a starter can't make a start. There's a couple of moves you have to make. You're shuttling people back and forth right. between Triple A. Right now, those guys are on this team. And that's two and zero to Chris Coughlin, who's 0 for three career against Blake Trinan. The catcher David Ross is next here in the seventh inning. What a pitch up! Scoots through. He is thinking about two. Well, Denard Span was wishing he did. Well, Denard dropped it, and that's when Coglin decided, "Do I have a chance to go to second? Span coming in just looks up. I think right at the last second, a lot like Anthony Rizzo did on the bunts. And watch Coglin. He's like, "Should I go?" Kind of. Decelerated a little bit too soon. So here's David, or rather Mike Baxter now going to hit for David Ross. So they'll go with the left handed batter here. You know, Joe Madden, he's not a guy who's going to leave a catcher on the bench if he thinks he can get a hitting matchup that he wants. Baxter has not faced Trinan before. See how the stuff plays against the left handed batter here. Bouncing ball. Zimmerman cuts it off. On the run to Desmond. Trying and waiting. And that's an outstanding 3-6-1 double play. Oh, nice feed by Zimmerman. Good job, Blake. Trying to get over there and find the base. Throw right on the money. Desmond with the return. And his foot was close to not being on. Nice job.
being brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. Proudly serving the armed forces and their families for over 80 years. And by DynCorp International, we serve today for a better tomorrow. Today we air this ball game in recognition on Masson of Memorial Day. We'd like to thank all of our United States military personnel for serving our nation. That was Mr. Cub, Ernie Banks, and how we miss him. Miguel Montero, the Cubs' frontline catcher, into the game. And the left-hander, Zach Roscup, 26 years of age, 6'2", 200. And 28 games the last two years for the Cubs. Part of their bullpen right now. Yeah, two pitches, fastball, slider. Fastball 60% of the time at 93 miles an hour. Slider 86. Dan Ugla, the only member of the Nats who's ever faced him. He's not in the game. So here we go, top eight with Yunel Escobar. And you know they bring in the left-hander with the second hitter of this inning in mind. Good point. Escobar pulls it foul. Yunello for three today. Foul out to right. Ground ball to short and a fly ball to right. The aforementioned left-handed hitter. So I got it. It's it's lefty on lefty, no gloves for Bryce. When he's facing the righty, just the right-handed glove. And I still have to ask him why. I forgot to do that on the plane yesterday. My bad. But you know what? He he doesn't like to talk about anything that has to do with hitting right now. He's just in such sure. a zone that you're almost afraid to ask him anything. Because you don't want to be the jinx. And guys, when they're going good, don't want to talk about hitting. Because you know why? You start to think about it. And when you're at your best at the highest level, you're not thinking. You're just reacting. You're being an athlete. So when they stick a mic in front of your face and say, what are you doing good right now? Yeah. Whatever you say is verbalized. And you start to think about it when you really haven't been thinking about anything. See ball, hit ball when you're going good. It's not because they don't want to talk to you. It's not because, you know, they're being surly. When guys are going good, just leave them alone. They don't even really like to talk hitting with their teammates. 3-2 to Escobar. Nats could use a base runner right here. And he was trying to kind of lean back and get out of the way of that one. And a 3-2 pitch. Fouled again. Edwin Jackson. The former Nat Cup signed him to a big contract. Didn't work out very well as a starter. He's in their bullpen. Escobar gets under it. Right side. Russell out. Solaire in. And he'll... Call the infielder off it. One out. Celebrate the season with American Standard All-Star Sales Event. Visit MidAtlanticComfort.com for amazing rebate and financing opportunities. Who's hot? Duh. That guy. Third in the league in average. First in everything else. RBI, walks, taters, slugging percentage, on base percentage. Sizzling. Numbers updated with this one for three today. So the batting average stays the same for now. Bryce likes to get that third baseman on the move on the first pitch of a bat now and then a lot of, a lot of times against lefties. Are you like me like every time he scores around I go <gasps> like <laughs> and then he'll air one out that was a curveball or a cutter going away from him. One one and he's too hard for a curve. He's getting better at the base hit button. If he can lay about one or two of those down a month, he's going to hit 300. But with 16 taters, Wrigley Field. 
let her rip. Well, Rice so get, or Bryce will get a right-hander tomorrow in Kyle Hendricks, and then of course John Lester, the lefty. What a matchup that is Wednesday night with Max Scherzer. A don't miss game three matchup. Fastball upstairs, three and one. It's a hard breaking ball at 89. Well, he's looking 3 1 fastball, got the slider. Going out there again. Bryce Harper takes it. And that's walk number 40 on the year. Fastball away. And Joe Madden wondering if it had plate. You can't see in or out from the bench. It had good height to him, but the ball was obviously outside. Ryan Zimmerman for two with the base on balls today. A situation where Bryce thinks about running. Let's see. Can't get a read on the lefty. Zimmerman, high chopper to the bag of Russell. Handled that well. And the Cubs turn a double play to send this game into the bottom of the eighth inning. By authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Washington Nationals. Learning the art of applauding at a ball game at a very young age. Here we go, bottom eight. Come out to Nats Parker on th Thursday, June 4th as the Nats take on the Chicago Cubs. It's a 7.05 start, and you're going to get a Ryan Zimmerman bobblehead that's presented by PNC Bank. First 25,000 fans. It commemorates Ryan's memorable walk-off tater. Nats Park opening day on March 30th, 2008. My How Time Flies. Go to nationals.com to purchase your tickets today. Matt Thornton on. You see the Arsenal. Fastball 94. Slider 85. Occasional changeup at 88.
Left hander Matt Thornton against Miguel Montero for the first time. Hitting a buck 54 they are against him. Montero hitting 267, five homers, 16 RBIs. Long, good career in Arizona before he got over here. He gets jammed severely. And Danny Espinosa has it for the first out. Eighth inning with more on the lefty. Here's Dan. Bob, Matt Thornton still throws mid 90s, although it's not as hard as he used to. And I asked him how he's still finding effectiveness despite that drop off in velocity. He said his slider is better now than it was earlier on in his career. He's making sure he gets extension on it, not cutting it off. But the development of his splitter to neutralize righties has been even more important. He feels that's making him a better pitcher. Situational appearance right there. He got Montero. He will depart. And it'll be Aaron Barrett next. The Nats have five outs to get. Well said Drew Storen and it might be well done Drew Storen again today. We'll worry about that when the ninth inning rolls around right now it's Aaron Barrett against Addison Russell the rookie. And a fastball average of 94 for Barrett slider 85. He has thrown a change up or two this year. They get in 220 against the bear. Ninety four missing up and in. Cubs, by the way, have an eight man bullpen. A little bit short on the bench when it gets to late game situations. They only have four extra men. Well, the reason why Joe Mann has already gone ahead and put Miguel Montero into this game. Russell 0 for 2. Strike out, foul out. And he sees the nasty slider from Aaron Barrett in their first career matchup. Unreachable. Another one. Well, Russell, the youngest of the bunch, at just 20 years of age, 21 years of age. And a one two swing and a miss at ninety five two down easy ninety five effortless ninety five arm side run to it he elevates it with two strikes Addison Russell cannot get on top of that you see the loop in his swing trying to lift the ball out of here maybe and tie the game up 
And there are some big outs left to get in this one folks in a one run game. Bryant Rizzo and Castro definitely going to hit. Yeah. yeah that ninth inning is really shaping up. Top of the order Dexter Fowler facing Barrett for the first time. 0 for 3 grounder fly ball strikeout. Matt Grace get loose in case Rizzo comes up this inning. Wow that thing. Throws the Nats battery. As they thought they had strike two. It's been a weird strike zone all day. I've tried not to talk about it. But it's been. A, a floating strike zone. And that's the last thing you want as a hitter. On a pitch up. Fly ball to center spin right there and this bullpen continues to be impressive. They did it to the Phillies. They're doing it to the Cubs. Wilson Rumbles did it to him last night with last time up home run. DraftKings. Play daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com. Enter promo code DUGOUT for free entry. Buy Land Rover above and beyond. And buy Aloha in theaters May 29th. There's our hotel right there. There it is. See it? There's a lot of big buildings in this town. It's right there. Their closer, Hector Rondon. He has saved by nine ball games, but he's had four, rather three blown saves. So he's in a hold'em situation here in the ninth inning. Wilson Ramos is 0 for 2 career against the right-hander. First pitch slider, fair ball, third base. Chris Bryant, plenty of time. How about that last at bat? Well, the sixth inning, this was the difference in this ball game so far. Fastball that just tailed back enough for Wilson Ramos to get barreled to baseball, drive it out the other way, and make this a two to one ball game. Sure sounded like one. There's Danny Espinosa, 0 for 3 career against the Cubs right hander. Saved 29 ball games last year. Strikeout guy at 63 K's in 63 innings. And that's 0 2. There's been so many guys contributing to this hot streak. I know we talk about Bryce Harper a lot, justifiably so, with the 491 average in May. 
that we've talked about. But when you talk about Drew Storm and what he's done in the bullpen. And good. the guys getting him the ball. Good take by Espinosa. Um, Denard Span's been playing lights out in center field and offensively. Ryan Zimmerman's walk off. Ian Desmond's 10 game streak. Danny Espinosa has been under the radar all season, doing a nice job. This one straight up. Chris Bryant took charge, two outs. Max Scherzer, Gio Gonzalez was his left. So, yeah, we, we focus on the superstars a lot, but to win that many games, the way they've been rolling, it, it's the whole, I mean, just keep panning across the dugout. It's everybody, Barrett, the bullpen. Matt Williams has been managing flawlessly with his way he's been mixing and matching the bullpen late in the game. Small ball all of a sudden, which we haven't really seen the last couple of years for the Nats. Button guys over. So it's a collective effort. And whatever happens here today, I just wanted to make that point that there's a lot of different guys playing very well. And if I left somebody out, I apologize. I probably did. Well, guys contributing. Michael Taylor, the great catch today. Right. The grand slam for Bryce Harper when he got thrown out of the game. Tyler Moore coming off the bench, doing a nice job here and there. Dan Uglis started the whole thing on April 28th with his home run in Atlanta. So, I mean, it's 25 guys. I know it's cliche, but it, it really has been. The turnaround, the man up, so to speak, has been amazing to watch from a team aspect, not just one or two different guys. Yeah, it's no cliche when they say all 25 guys. It is when they're not really contributing, but they all are. Clint Robinson getting spot starts. Jose Lobatone yesterday with the, the, the framing. Fastball. The Nats gone in the ninth, and here we go. The Cubs have 2 3 4 due up against a red hot Drew Story. Another low scoring ball game today. They won a couple of those lately as FP has mentioned chance to do it again for the Nats all season long in 2015 with MLB.com at bat the number one app for live baseball at bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights live look ins replay reviews radio broadcast stat cast and more get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Here we go. Ding ding. This is going to be a big boy save. For Drew Storm right here in the ninth as he faces Chris Bryant with the fastball slider changeup combination. Yeah. This 2 3 4 is really more of a 3 4 5 as far as the lineup goes. And the slider 83, a beauty. Might see two more of those. Yeah, right at the knees. 
See, now you have the luxury, if you're Drew Storen, to buzz the tower, meaning throw a fastball in, go back to the slider way, or just go to the well right now, and if you can, start it on the outer half of the plate and break it off. See if he'll chase a ball with you right here. Laid off. Tried. Inside the numbers with Jeep on Drew Storen. Amazing numbers the last 14 times out. First in the league with 14 saves total. Stay out there with that slider. He showed him the fastball. And Harper in the corner. No room. No more fastballs. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's good. You go fastball away, and maybe you throw a slider out there, and he sees his mind tells him, oh, it's another fastball away. Slider breaks late. You get a strike three. Well, this goes to show you what kind of poise this rookie has. Been in the big leagues for a month and spitting on tough pitches. Well, those weren't strikes long enough for him to commit. That's good drama. I am loving every minute of this. It's a fastball 95 away and Bryant pulling the trigger at the last moment. That's good battle going on right here folks. Well coming into this series there are a lot of quotes from the third base side that this was a series where the Cubs would measure how good of a ball club they are by taking on a first place Washington team. Foul tip. He's out. Ball hit the bat. Bryant claiming it hit him on the hand. Here comes Joe Madden. You can review and challenge a hit by pitch. They're going to do it. It appears. You have to. It's the ninth inning. Crew chief is Hunter Wendelstead at second base. He's on his way in. Ryan Blackney, the home plate umpire. What do you got, Carp? Help me out here. I'm not sure I saw bat. The umpire heard something. First off, Blackney asking for help. Seeing it hit him on the wrist. And they're going to go check it out. It has to be indisputable to overturn it. But we've said that before. Well, that's a tying run, either at first base or one out, nobody on base. Is it indisputable, though, Carp? That's what I'm flipping coins in my head with, and you know I stink at this. Every time I say it's one thing, it's the other. This will give us a really good look. Did that get him in the wrist or the bat? I mean, I can't tell. I you know, from that angle, from that angle, it looks more bat than it does from the center field angle. And this is leadoff guy on a one-run game or strike three. This is a huge, huge call. Obviously. And Bryant can run, too. Don't forget that. Oh. Drama. All right, what do we got here? I can't tell. It's funny, every time they played on the board, first time the Cub fans saw it, they all went crazy. Now with every subsequent replay, they've been very silent. It's 
call, his, call is under review on a scoreboard at Wrigley Field. A little ironic, and they're going to give him first base. See, Matt Williams just asked first base up by Mike DeMuro, was there a swing on that? So if there's a swing on that and they said he went, it supersedes whether the ball hit him or not, right? You swing at a pitch, it hits you in the leg, it's strike three. So Matt Williams want to know, hey, did he go? And it, it's obvious he didn't. Anthony Rizzo against Drew Storen, one for four career with a base on balls. Breaking ball stays outside. There's the floating strike zone again. That's been a strike at times today. Rizzo has grounded into two double plays this year. Targets on the outer half. The changeup misses 2-0. Well, if you're just starting, you got to regroup. You thought you had strike three. You thought you just got a, a big leadoff out in a one-run game. You thought you just won a battle between a pretty good hitter and yourself. Now he's on first base. You're in the stretch. Time run on. Refocus. Get back in the strike zone right here. You have to throw a quality strike to Anthony Rezzo, not just a strike in a 2-0 count. Rizzo pops it up. Desmond is under it, still going, and the one-hander for the out. Oh, that was not an easy play. If you've ever played a day game at Wrigley Field late in the afternoon with the sun, the wind, and all the elements, nice play by Ian Desmond. I've seen guys get all turned around on the same sort of pop-up, and that was a quality strike by Drew Storm. Watch the location. In. Couldn't get there. And now let the games begin doing the pop-up dance. Nicely done by Ian Desmond. Huge first out here in the ninth. Yeah, that was all Ian because Taylor was playing very deep. Here's Starlin Castro, who's one for three career against Drew Storm. He has hit into eight double plays this year. Trying to end it. Yeah. 96. I don't know if I've seen 96 from Drew yet this year. Two on Washington, one on one out, bottom nine. First of what is going to be an outstanding series. And this ball is in the center. Denard Span under it. Two down. I'm surprised Chris Bryant didn't think about tagging right there. He kind of drifted off the bag. He got halfway. It was clear that Span was camped under it. That ball's about 390 feet away from home plate. He's fast. And I'm thinking maybe he should have at least got back to the bag yeah. and gave it a look. He was halfway all the way. Jorge Soler facing Drew Storen for the first time. First pitch slider. He gets the call at the knees. Keeping the ball down, first pitch slider. We're almost moving to the outer edge. And then Storin throws 84 to the other side of the plate and gets a strike. Another slider. Way ahead, you have time. Don't be in a hurry right here to get the last strike and the last out. A bouncer and Ramos keeps the runner at first. Great block, Wilson Ramos. Kept it close, kept Ryan at first. That's all that counts.
He'll overthrow on the slider. Two balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss on a high fastball. The Nats have done it again. This is 11 of their last 14 on the road. They're a machine right now. They're, they're finding ways to win games, whatever it takes. Small ball today was the home run. It was pitching. Tanner Roark was the Tanner Roark of 2014. Did a great job. And Drew Storm just 96. Jorge Soler with the fastball up. The fist pump by the Buffalo with the game ready tater. Happy Memorial Day, everybody. Just another lousy W for your Washington Nationals. How was that for a holiday Whew. baseball game? At one of the great ballparks you could ever see one in. That's FP. I'm Bob. And for Dan Coco, your Nationals have done it again. They are now 27 and 18. They've won 8 of 9 and 20 of 25. Tomorrow night game will get you going at 6.30, Nats Cubs. In that one, it will be Jordan Zimmerman against Kyle Hendricks. This has been a presentation of Masson from Wrigley Field. See you later.